Okay, a lot of what we do in graphic animation requires uh, that you use text. And many of you probably know uh, instinctively how to do that, uh, but also there's a good number of you who've never used After Effects, so uh, it's important to understand how to use text. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new composition. We'll leave it at 1920 by 1080. Uh, and we're just going to call name the comp. By the way, you should always name your comp. Leaving it comp 1, 2, and 3 is not helpful when you are trying to figure out which is which. So I'm just going to call this one uh, intro to text use. Okay. All right. Uh, now, a couple of things here. When In the way I have my thing set up right now, it comes up with this uh, these checkerboard. This checkerboard is telling me that there is no video here. This is basically transparent. So I don't want it to be transparent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called a solid. So you go underneath Layer, New, Solid. Okay, when you, that comes up, uh, you have the option of making it the comp size, which I want to do. It already is the comp size, uh, but I, what I want you to do is say make comp size, and then you can change the color of uh, this solid. It's going to fill the whole area there. Uh, and just for the sake of this video, normally I'm going to use black, uh, but because uh, it's this little YouTube video, let's go ahead and make it something a little bit more uh, pretty to look at. Okay. Typically, you're going to use black if you're going to just put titles up, uh, but let's just do that. So we're filling that back area. Notice that this is now uh, blue. Um, you can see this solid is here. If I turn it on and off with the eyeball, you will see that uh, it disappears. Now, we use solids for all different things as well as just a background. Solids can be applied to many of the effects, and we will be using those later on. But whenever you're in the need of some sort of media, uh, then I would say the first thing that you'd probably want to do is go to Layer, New, Solid. Okay. Uh, these other objects in here, we can create virtual lights, cameras, uh, null, null objects. All these things we're going to be getting to. Uh, more or less, okay? But for now, we're going to just work on this because this is about trying to create text. So if you look up here, these are the main tools that we use all the time, okay? And they're very similar to Photoshop tools if you're familiar with Photoshop tools. Some of these are specific to uh, After Effects where there are cameras involved um, and you know, erasers and clone stamps. We're going to deal with all of those. But for now, you hit the letter T. Also want you to notice that if there's that tiny little triangle in the bottom right corner of this tool. That's telling me that if I click and hold, there is more than one thing underneath there. Okay? Uh, this has a vertical type tool and a horizontal. I'm going to go with the horizontal. And then I just click anywhere in this window here. And notice by default, it came up with a new layer for the text. Okay? And so now I'm going to go ahead and type uh, a logo name. So I'm going to say Tiny Fist Films. Uh, let's say I didn't want to use the, this particular font. So I'm going to, still in the text tool, I'm going to select that font and then you go underneath where it says character. Now if you're not seeing character, uh, you can say standard or this little arrow over here will show you all the available windows that give you these kind of tools on the side. Okay, so I have the one that, call, that says character. Character is the one that is going to have these fonts. With this selected, I can go ahead and just pick a different font. Let's say I'm going to pick this one for now. Okay, and so when I click away, now I, it's not highlighted here. So I'm going to click this arrow, and I'm just going to put it in the center for now. So by that arrow allows me to drag it. And notice that when I'm dragging it, that little red line shows up in the middle there, and that's telling me where the center is. So it's trying to help me along uh, this invisible grid so that you can center things. Okay. Now, what I really want you to pay attention to when working with graphics is what a, a professional artist typically needs to do is if you just type Tiny Fix, Fist Films and called it done, uh, you are still an amateur. So what you want to do is you want to pay attention to the space between the letters. Like the space between this Y and this F are not the same as what you're seeing over there. So uh, you have to 
go through every piece of text once you've decided on the font that is because it's going to change from font to font uh, so you're going to uh, go back to the text tool and I'm going to click in between those letters okay so let's say I like the space in between this I and this T and I'm going to use that as a reference so I'm holding down option and I'm using the left arrow and while I'm holding it in, I'm just moving it along. I let go of the Option key, and now the arrow allows me to go from space to space. So I'm going to go through each and every uh, letter, and Option, Arrow, I'm going to try to even those things out. Option, Arrow to the right. And maybe I want a little bit more space between these words. I'm kind of eyeballing it now. Uh, but you can get a grid built into it here. So down here there is a some tools for a grid. If you want to see a grid, then you this is a tool that you can use, uh, which not will not show up in your project when you render it out, uh, but it allows you to kind of see how much space is in between each letter, and you can use it that way. You can zoom in on these things as well and kind of get a better look at it. If I hold in the space, uh, go back to the arrow, hold in the space bar. Oops, I'll do that. Uh, I go back to the arrow, hold in the space bar, and I can move this around. So if I want to blow this up, and then I hold in the space bar, notice it turns into a little hand, and then I can, I can move that around. Okay, so now I go back to my text tool, and I see like it's about three quarters of a box between that one and that one. So this one here, the Y is a little bit trickier uh, because it has this little uh, descender. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to make them all more or less the same distance between letters. All right, and then uh, down here is where I can change, you know, fit to the film. And if I want to get rid of these uh, grids, just go back and deselect those grids. Okay, so that is something that you have to pay attention to. Um, I will be looking at your graphics to see if you paid attention to the space between the letters. Uh, there's something called letting and tracking, and letting and tracking refers to the space between lines and the space between letters, and I really want you to pay attention to that. So now if we come down here and I twirl down um, the Tiny Fist Films, this, this is the text layer over here. Um, I twirl this down. I have my basic transformations, right? Uh, those are going to be there all the time, but text has its own special thing as well. And so just to kind of be aware of it, I'm not going to get into it too much at the moment. We're going to re return to this later. You have something here that says animate. And so you can animate individual letters. For example, you have uh, enable per character 3D. So if I turn that on, notice that I get this little 3D uh, object here. You now notice what happens under transform. I have additional rotation tools. And so now if I, I uh, change these values here, whoops, let's get rid of that. So because I added that enable per character 3D, now under transformation I have these X, Y, and Z coordinate changes as well. So if I'm going to rotate this uh, Z coordinate, uh, it does that, uh, so you can change the, the letters so it can swing in and out. Notice where the anchor point is, is over here, right? So that's where I was meant, so here it kind of spins around, so it's not a 3D object, it's a 3D layer, so you can see as soon as you see the top of it, it has no depth. So this particular tool, uh, I think After Effects does have some 3D capabilities, I, do, I am not planning on getting into that because that is not what this course is about. Uh, actually, there is a, a free version of, uh, of uh, Cinema 4D built into After Effects, which I recommend that you do, but uh, that's not what this course is. Uh, and then so we can have do different, different things with it as well. Um, if you want to move that anchor point, oh, what I want to show you as well here is once you apply a 3D tool to it, which is what we did with that last object, you get these three arrows, and notice when I put my cursor over them, the one going up is Y, to the left and right horizontal is um, X, and then over the uh, blue arrow, which is facing towards me, is the Z. Z is depth going in and out, 
and then this is up and down vertical and this is horizontal here so I can drag those arrows as well so if I take the Z and move it in and out it's actually uh, moving space in and out like that so that's kind of interesting uh, what I'm gonna do now is I want to show you how to use uh, the Gaussian blur so if I select let's go ahead and select this layer here and I'm going to apply the effect. I'm going to go to uh, Blur and Sharpen, and I'm going to select uh, Gaussian Blur. Okay, and by default it does nothing, but if you come up here you can kind of see that the blurriness is off. And so this might be something where, let's say, uh, just a real basic animation that I'm going to create here is uh, I've applied this effect here, right? Uh, and at the very beginning of the film, it's usually good to leave a few seconds beforehand. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just drag this. And I'm holding in the shift key so it snaps to that number there. Uh, and then, or to that playhead here. And at that point, I'm going to create a blurriness. I'm turning on a keyframe. I'm not seeing any keyframes here, but it's underneath the effects. So you can kind of see, like, uh, if I twirl down the effects, there is a keyframe it created when I clicked it on up here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and say at the very head of this thing, uh, it was super blurry. So I'm going to just make it crazy blurry. Okay, and then maybe it takes. Uh, so this is. I'm looking over here. This is uh, at three seconds. Let's say at four seconds and eleven frames. Um, one second in, I'm going to change the blurriness to zero. Okay, so I have now created an animation of this blur. All right, now I'm going to just do one other thing. I'm going to go ahead and move these keyframes. Actually, let's do it this way. So this is my first keyframe. I'm going to go to the uh, arrow so that I'm sitting on that first keyframe. I'm going to go a little bit before it. And then I'm going to also animate the transparency, which is uh, opacity over here. So I'm going to turn on this, and at this point, I want it to be 100% visible, okay? But I want it to fade in, so I'm going to go back a little bit, and I'm going to turn that to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and make my work area here. So I'm going to hit the letter N, and the start of it is here, and B for beginning. So my work area is this. If I hit zero on my number pad, so it fades in and then the blur changes. And so we could probably work with the time a little, timing a little bit. Maybe, uh, let's go ahead and zoom this in. So maybe I want to overlap the fade in at the same time as the, as the dissolve is happening so that it's happening simultaneously. So let's go ahead and maybe make that a little bit sooner here. And so now let's go ahead and see what it does. All right, so that is uh, some basic text tools. And you have a lot of text things that you can work with here, uh, spacing and uh, characters and all different type of things that you can work with.